I wanted to take the time to introduce, showcase, and explore one of the most interesting new mechanics coming to Guild Wars 2 when the second expansion, Path of Fire, drops. And in fact, maybe even before the expansion goes live, with a big balance update that is also due to ship. That mechanic that I want to talk to you guys about is Barrier. You've probably seen snippets of it from the media and press stuff about the expansion, but a lot of people aren't entirely clear, and I wanted to lay down on the line what it is, but also why I'm actually really excited about it. Like any new mechanic, it could fall kind of flat and not do very much in the end, but with the right handling, I see a lot of fun places we could go. So let's talk about Barrier. Barrier is a new mechanic that interacts with your health and your sustain in combat. It is not a buff, it is not a boon, it's not an active effect in the standard sense, but it hooks directly onto your health bar. Barrier is a shield that you would expect from many other RPGs, frankly, uh, or even action games. I heard somebody make the comparison to it being like an overshield from the Halo franchise, and I think that's fairly descriptive. Barrier is extra health on top of your health. As you can see from the user interface here, when I was playing on a Scourge, some of the new elite specializations and some of the classes in the game will be able to apply this to make you that bit more sustainy. Another health bar, if you will, albeit a temporary one, in a similar vein to what Core Necromancer and Reaper gets access to when they go into their Shroud. So while you have Barrier up, what it does is it reduces incoming damage. If you check out this footage here, you'll see an enemy I'm fighting has some Barry. You can see on his health bar up there, he's got that little grey bit in addition to his regular health. And as I attack him, instead of there just being one number of damage that I'm doing, we actually see two. We see one is in white and the other is in yellow. That's his barrier. The yellow number is the damage I'm doing to his barrier, and the white regular number is the damage that I'm doing to his health. So you might wonder why with my one eviscerate here, or decapitate rather, I got both numbers came up. That's because the 1385 damage you see there was the last of his barrier's health. And then anything I did in excess of that finally got through to his real health because I destroyed the entire thing. In this clip, instead, you can see I'm getting only yellow numbers, and that's because I'm still just working my way through the much meatier barrier that these mobs have with uh, weaker axe skills at the time. So yeah, it's just health on top of health, and eventually when you break the barrier, you get back to the real health that's underneath. So the important thing to understand about us as players getting barrier, unlike perhaps many enemies we'll find around the desert, is that barrier degenerates very fast. Because barrier is in Guild Wars 2 now, it doesn't mean everyone's going to be running around with tons more health because all their classes can allow them to get access to extra health on top of their health. The idea is that you can pump barrier onto people, you can overheal them, but only for a short period of time, and then it starts to run out again. You can see an example of this here. Uh, the speed that barrier falls off of you feels like it's kind of about the same speed as your health would regenerate when you're out of combat. So what this means, and from the skills that I can tell so far, is that barrier isn't a purely passive defensive thing. It's not a reactive thing. It's very much a preemptive thing. You have to anticipate when a big burst is coming in on you. Maybe a raid boss is about to execute a huge ability. Maybe something in a fractal is about to do that, or a story boss. Maybe you're in world versus world or PvP and you anticipate a lot of de damage coming in. That's the idea of Barry. You do it early, you anticipate something that's upcoming, and that's how you get the most use out of it, because it's constantly draining away. That idea of using skills preemptively was always a big part of the original Guild Wars. People loved monks in Guild Wars 1, but mostly it wasn't the healing power monks that everybody loved the gameplay and the style of. It was the protection prayers monks. It was the people who were anticipating stuff and were catching it before it came in, and then maybe a little bit of infused play on top. That was what was really fun, and I like the look of Barrier because I think it pushes the game Guild Wars 2 more into that space. A bit like 
like Aegis was anticipated to do back at the release and still kind of gets a little bit of a look in. Uh, so some other little details about Barrier, many of you won't know because it hasn't been released. I got this information from a developer and unfortunately don't have any demonstrations of it in action, but there are multiple different things that Barrier scales on. One of the first things I thought when I saw Barrier was, was in the game was, wow, this is a chance to have a new stat, like a Barrier stat. And the more you invest into that through new wounds and traits and sigils and things, perhaps this increases the effectiveness of your Barrier. They didn't go that route, but they hooked Barrier into existing attributes that are already in the, there in the game. Specifically two, Vitality and Healing Power. So first, let's talk about Vitality. What Vitality will do is the more that you build it, just as it's increasing your maximum health pool, it also now increases your maximum potential barrier pool. So when you mouse over your health orb, you'll see that you've got you know 12,000 out of 12,000 health, and then you'll also see that you have probably zero out of 4,000 barrier. If you build your Vitality up, you can go to zero out of 5,000 barrier or 6,000 barrier and so on and so on. I don't know what the max values are as I haven't been able to dig quite deeply into this, but that's what the role of vitality is when it comes to barrier. It's actually something really interesting because it means that you double dip on effectiveness for vitality going forwards in Guild Wars 2 because you're not just building your health bar, but you're also building your barrier capacity also. And I like that idea. I like that idea of a little bit more incentive to build vitality. In some areas of the game, vitality is obviously incredibly strong. If you're PvPing and you're on a very low health character, vitality is great to build. If you're against a lot of condition damage, vitality can be very strong to build. But especially in areas of PvE, vitality can feel quite weak. People don't like running stuff like Marauder gear at the moment. When Heart of Thorns came out, at least toughness got more of a look in because toughness tanking became a thing in raids. But Vitality, it hasn't had a look in and now maybe it will a bit. I think this is interesting for Buildcraft and I'm looking forward to seeing how that makes me reassess, say, Marauders or some of these more Vitality heavy stat sets like, I don't know, Sentinels and seeing exactly how ludicrous that gets on a warrior who converts his power into more Vitality too and then we pump a ton of barrier on the guy. So that double dipping aspect I do think is quite fun. Uh, but Vitality is not the only thing. The other thing that it's hooked into is healing power. So Vitality is your maximum capacity for barrier, but healing power is what decides how much you actually apply. So let's say you're playing as a weaver and you have a trait that means any time you use one of your new dual attack skills, you gain barrier. That is a trait that exists. The uh, amount of barrier you get will fluctuate based on how much healing power you build. So the Weaver is angling to be, as far as I can see, a frontline condition damage bruiser that relies on barrier to get the job done. And that means that you may actually see healing power being a worthwhile thing to build as a Weaver just because that will improve your barrier application. The other thing to consider then with healing power is because of this interaction and the fact we know the Scourge is angling to be a support class that supports through barrier. That also means Scourges will also be looking at healing power just like any other support uh, builds may have been before Path of Fire actually came out. So that's the Scourge and the Weaver. Um, let's talk a little bit about who gets barrier, where this comes from. Those two are the big main ones of the Gen 2 Elite Specializations. We're seeing a lot there. The Scourge has high bursts of uh, AoE uh, barrier that they can actually give to their allies, while the Weaver gets lots of small packets of barrier. The Weaver can get barrier on their dual attacks and they can get barrier after dodge rolls, I think it is. And the Weaver specifically uses barrier selfishly. It doesn't share it out to other people. It uses it for itself and that's kind of a necessity because the Weaver, again, is looking to be a frontline bruisery kind of spec and on such a low vitality and light armor value, it needs a lot of barrier to be able to do that. And there's also an adept trait which gives them a ton of vitality, helping them along as well. And that vitality, guess what, helps them with the barrier as I just explained. So those are the two big places we know. But at the start of this video, I mentioned barrier might even be a thing just before Path of Fire comes out. That's because we're expecting a balance update. A balance update that should shift around all the current stuff that's in the game to make space for these new elite specializations. We've started to hear tidbits of what could be in it. We know that there has been a lot of changes to, for example, signets. We know that there's been reshuffling of the positions of traits. Well, on top of this, the developers will be adding barrier to core specializations too. This is not limited to just the Gen 2 stuff. It will be coming to core specializations. Now, I have no footage or proof for you guys, but I have seen it and I have played it. 
I know for a fact that Core Elementalist is on their Earth specialization, Getting Barrier. So Earth specialization for the Ellie has always been the more defensively inclined line. It's been a bit lackluster in the past, and it seems now that the devs have developed Barrier for Path of Fire, they're looking at filtering it into other places. So yes, that means if you're an Earth specialized Weaver, you will get a ton of Barrier. I believe that the uh, Elementalist is getting, uh, in their Earth specialization, Barrier on Swap to Earth, or perhaps it's uh, on stuff like Armor of Earth, or as they get attacked and hit low health thresholds, they can proc barrier on themselves. It is absolutely a thing. Uh, as for other places that we might see barrier, well, that's uh, more up in the air. I don't know for sure. But I am quite excited about where else they could put it. I don't think Elementalists should be the one special one that's going to get Barrier and a core specialization. It probably will happen elsewhere. And I think that if we really take a step back, and this is me speculating now, guys, but if we take a step back and look at the nine classes, I think you'll find that most of the equivalent lines to Earth, the toughnessy, defensive y, selfish, I'm a bit more tanky lines across so many of the classes all feel a bit limp, a bit lackluster. And in many of those places, I'd love to see Barrier. I think I I'd like to see Barrier, for example, on Jarlis for the Revenant. I think I'd like to see Barrier on some death magic stuff for the Necromancer, especially considering that I love the idea of having Barrier and going into Shroud at the same time. And death magic feels a bit wonky when you're not running minions and taking all the top traits or facing against Sincere Condi. So I see space there. More than anywhere else, though, that I would love to see some Barrier come onto core specializations is actually the Guardian. Let's not forget the Guardian as a core class, when we don't look at elite specializations, it is sold on the idea of being a protector, a defender of its allies, and a support. And it has never really, as a core class, filled that role well enough. You know, if you want to be a tank in Guild Wars 2, if you want to be a support class in Guild Wars 2, there are so many other classes that have done that better and for longer. That I think is a real shame. I think Guardian, therefore, perhaps looking at some of its lines, getting not just selfish barrier, but also shareable barrier, like the Scourge is going to on the Necromancer Elite Specialization, I think that would be amazing for Guardians and I would really, really hope to see at least a little bit of that somewhere. So that's Barrier and this is why we don't, we shouldn't just look at it as a Path of Fire thing. It is something that has been developed because of Path of Fire but will affect the whole game. Just as when Heart of Thorns came out and we saw Taunt, right? And now Taunt is in several different places in the game but it kind of uh, was spurred in because of the Gen 1 Elite Specializations. So uh, let's go a little bit further now and talk about where barrier can be used uh, because this is quite exciting to me there are several other um, things to touch on First, let's talk about PvP and Conquest. I think here, Barrier is an, a very obvious thing. Uh, it's a defensive mechanic that you'll be able to use when you're on your nodes and when uh, a big team fight breaks out uh, to be able to defend people. I particularly like the idea of being able to pop a lot of Barrier to cover reses or stomps, perhaps, and uh, that should create some interesting new dynamics there. But I don't have too much to say. I have mentioned before that uh, it feels like with the Gen 2 Elite Specializations and Contemporary Balance in Guild of Sioux, they are being very careful to make things too tanky. And Barrier is, you know, a sustain mechanic that they're adding to the game. But I think uh, the, the reins will be held back a little bit for the PvP-specific balance. Uh, world versus World, I think it's fairly obvious to see how it will be used there as well. I think we're going to see it before people push in on their big... Um, melee slams and when they go in through their portals and go for these big crunches as you try to navigate your way through chokes we're going to see barrier be used a lot uh, and there's something very important to think about here guys as well the other thing the other side of the coin with these elite specializations is there's a ton of boon rip coming into guild wars 2 a ton of it specifically look at stuff like the spellbreaker the spellbreaker has an elite which establishes a huge area on the battlefield that rips insane numbers of boons 20 boons per player it has a 10 player cap and it persists for ages, not only does it rip all of those boons, but it actually goes out of its way to prevent the application of new ones for that period of time while destroying all projectiles, right? That's just one example. There's tons of boon rip coming into the game. And uh, what this could do for Wild vs. Wild, as far as my limited understanding goes, is with that much boon rip, you're really punishing these kind of melee trains. We are risking going back to something like the pirate ship meta where people are too scared to push too closely in. And that's not desirable for everyone. But that's where Barrier comes to save the day. Barrier is a defensive mechanic that can cover people crunching and pushing into one another without having to fear all this new boon rip that's being added because it cannot be boon ripped. It is not a boon. It is not an active effect. It is an extension of your 
health bar. And so uh, that's something interesting. Seeing how the balance works out there in World vs. World and which way the pendulum swings in the end is going to be uh, pretty turbulent and pretty crazy. Uh, then let's move on to PvE. Now, PvE is what I play the most. I'm very excited about in PvE, and I've already seen it being used in PvE. Look at the footage I've shown you on uh, this video. A random enemies have got barrier. They've got abilities that they'll use on themselves to apply barrier to themselves. Uh, but it goes a lot further than that. In PvE, we can see barrier appear on special action skills, on consumables. We can see it be used in interesting ways in story steps. We can have future masteries and other contextual moments all over PvE that use barrier in some way. Think about Heart of Thorns and when they added break bars. Break bars are a very different mechanic for a very different purpose, but they have allowed the devs to give us more interesting encounters in an incredible number of different ways. And I think that barrier now is another tool for the devs. Now we're going to have break bars and barriers, and I think that's going to be really, really fun. Uh, so we'll see it a lot on PvE enemies just around in the open world and presumably story. But let's talk a bit about fractals and raids. So there will be new fractals coming to the game. There will be new raids coming to the game. And there I think it opens up some very interesting design. First of all, the enemies themselves using barrier. That can be a big thing in these areas of endgame. Perhaps if you fail some kind of a mechanic in a raid, instead of it being a, an instant wipe for the group, what it does is it puts a lot of barrier on the boss and that slowly gets worse and worse and worse until you sort of get drained out perhaps maybe it's an enemy that will no matter what you do apply barrier to itself and you have to make sure to only spike it with damage in those brief windows where its barrier has fallen because maybe its barrier is degenerating away and then it will come back every now and then uh, at specific periods of time. So you've got enemies having barrier, but much more interestingly, I want to talk about players using barrier in these areas of end game. And I specifically want to talk about this through the lens of the Scourge. So in the ideal world for Guild Wars 2, we have nine classes and all nine of them should have a support spec that is not just viable, but optimal somewhere. Now for that to work with nine different classes, these need to be very specific niches. So Druid, for example, is always going to be an incredible support because it buffs our damage so much. Auromancing Tempest is always going to be a really strong support because it reduces our incoming damage so much. And so, where does the Scourge fit in with this? What's the Scourge's niche? And I do think Barrier is a good enough one. Uh, there have been uh, a few people quite pessimistic about this I've seen online since Barrier was revealed, but I definitely think there is a lot of space for uh, Barrier to not just be good, but to be absolutely necessary. So in a lot of raid encounters specifically recently, we've seen the devs play with the kind of ways you can mitigate damage. In the Veil Guardian encounter, for example, they have a mechanic that is a big global nuke across the whole group that you cannot dodge. So the idea is you're supposed to go and play the mechanic properly. But then people realized that they could use distortion to invulnerable their way through and there was an alternate route. So this was a global nuke that can't be dodged and couldn't be blocked, but could be involved. In Wing 4, we saw they played with that a little more. We had more big global nukes that can't be dodged or distorted, but could be blocked. And this led to some interesting build craft where people were more willing to take different skills like well of precognition and uh, you know running dragon hunters so they could pop a bit more Aegis and so on. I think that the devs can continue to play with this. When barrier is a tool that they've got to use and mess around with in the game, what they can do is have large global nukes like I've described in previous encounters, but they do massive amounts of damage based on people's current health. They cannot be blocked dodged or distorted, and so people end up looking towards barrier. Perhaps they can play around with what we already see in Fractals of the Mist, where we have Agony. You might say, well, you don't need barrier, you can just heal up instead. Then play with mechanics such as Agony, where healing and the efficiency of healing is reduced or even eliminated, thus asking people to look into new build areas that the Scourge can provide. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to run a Scourge support because we do see Barrier has been filtered in elsewhere in the game. And now we're living in a world for Guild Wars 2 where you've got Druids are useful in certain places, you've got Tempests useful in certain places, and you have the Scourge useful in certain places because it is the best at applying AoE Barrier and they can make encounters where you want AoE Barrier to get through comfortably. 
And obviously, we are not talking about making this a binary on-off switch. You need a scourge or fail. That kind of uh, thing is probably more of a detriment to build craft than it is a positive aspect. But if we get somewhere on that spectrum, which hopefully everyone in the comments appreciates, I think this could be a really positive uh, area for Guild Wars 2 to go in. And it's one of the reasons I'm really excited about Barrier. A couple of other things uh, to get you guys thinking now that there's new mechanics in the game that you may not have considered and could twist things up. There's also, in Guild Wars 2 right now, raiding scene, there is this idea of toughness tanking. Uh, and there's the an idea of range tanking and so forth. But this toughness tanking idea, they could easily do stuff like barrier tanking, where it's the person with the highest shield values overall who is the person that can manipulate the boss's aggro. And again, if we see a lot of stuff go onto core guardian then, that potentially could finally give Guardians an avenue to feel like the tanks for the first time in five years. Uh, there are other things to look out for too, just purely in terms of buildcraft. With this in the game, there can be sigils, there can be runes, and there can be food. All of these things can affect barrier through perks, right? So they could scale perhaps how much barrier you're applying without it doing it through healing power. They can maybe affect your maximum barrier capacity without you having to specifically build vitality for that. Or they can even do other areas of of barrier that don't get covered by vitality or healing power. Think about this, a rune where the tier 6 on the rune is that barrier degenerates more slowly on you. That's not necessarily a healing power thing or a vitality thing, but that could work and the same for foods and so on. All of these would be interesting build making decisions on how you want to work with barrier. Uh, we can even see updates to core runes and core sigils that are currently really lackluster. Look at stuff like Rune of the Doliac, right? It's clearly supposed to be a big major tanky rune and the tier 6 on it right now is gain regen for your health, which is terrible and pathetic and useless. What if that T6 changed to somehow affecting barrier, giving you more barrier, helping you apply barrier, or helping you cling on to barrier once you've got it? All of that's really cool, right? So for those of you who really like Buildcraft, for those of you who really like the nitty gritty and so on, I think you've got a lot to really look forward to with not just the Gen 2 specs, but hopefully this upcoming balance pass. And hopefully this uh, has demonstrated to you guys a little bit more of what Barrier is, how it works, and how it could affect Guild Wars 2 in the future. A few things that I've been excited about it. So I did want to talk about that, and a few of the other headline features from Path of Fire will appear in videos uh, coming up very shortly as well, guys. Let me know what you think. I get it's a bit nerdy and nitty gritty on this one, but hey, I like a bit of fun discussion sometimes. I'll see you in the comments. Cheers guys, I'll catch you next time.